Hello, Jeff Zwerink here, and welcome to Give and Take. This is the segment of our show where we look at interesting scientific ideas and look at how they support the truth of the Christian faith. Today I'm joined by Fuzz Rana, and we're going to look at information and whether information requires a mind. Fuzz, it's good to have you back on the show. Jeff, thank you. So if we're talking about information, obviously there's got to be some level of information out in the world that we're talking about. Uh, what are some of the ways that people see information and argue for information? And how do people, are, and are people arguing that that isn't actually information? Yeah, well, you know, when you look at, uh, for example, biochemical systems, that's one place where we see uh, some really provocative insights into the nature of living systems that look uh, that suggests that living systems at their essence are information systems. So for example, inside the cell you have the DNA molecule that is digitized information where that information is in the sequence of the building block mm -hmm. materials that make up DNA. And well, that I mean, I presume that's why you know got the genetic code, you know, code right. has that context of information. It, to exactly, it. or you might hear it called the blueprint of life right. or the life's instruction manual. And, and the idea here is that DNA is uh, harboring the information that the cell needs to make all the different protein machines that carry out the operations inside the cell. And in turn, proteins themselves are information-rich molecules mm -hmm. where that information is in the sequence of the building blocks that make up proteins, which are amino acids. And so we see that biochemical systems are information systems, and there's even something called, as you refer to, the, the genetic code, mm -hmm. which is a, a set of rules that decode the information in DNA uh, and, so that the cell can, again, produce the proteins that carry out its operations. So biochemical systems are information-rich, information-harboring systems. Do people dispute that this is actually information in here? Well, th some people do. Some okay. people argue that uh, we are, when we refer to information in biological systems, uh, what we're doing is using metaphorical language to just give us some kind of conceptual handle on what's happening in the cell. But uh, to me, I think that information really is information. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, people that are information theorists that study the nature of information have pointed out that there's a structure to the information in, in biochemical systems that is identical to the, the structure of human languages. Uh, there's a hierarchical okay. structure in human language where you have letters that combine to make words and words, sentences and sentences, paragraphs, and you see that same kind of hierarchical structure in biochemistry. And recently a team of researchers showed that there's a, a mathematical structure to biochemical information that is identical to the mathematical structure that we see in languages. Mm -hmm. And so I think you could make an argument that this really is information because when information theorists treat biochemical systems as if it was information, it's very fruitful, it's very insightful. So, uh, you know, I guess one thing, if I were to push back on that, uh, uh, thinking about that, you know, that ultimately all of these biomolecules, if you will, are made up of atoms, and atoms but combine and behave in a certain mm -hmm. way. Um, you know, you put enough atoms together and you get salt or this, and it has things mm -hmm. that behave a certain way. I mean, <clears throat> how is that any different, you know, that you may get something that looks like information? How's that any different than, well, you know, over the course of years, ocean or rivers will lay down sediment and make layers. We can go look at those layers and say, oh, right. there's information about age in there, but in some sense, we're kind of imposing the information. How would you respond to that claim? Yeah, that, that's uh, an, an interesting rejoinder that I, I've heard recently, you know, about uh, the fact that information doesn't necessarily have to come from a mind. Mm -hmm. You know, that while biochemical information really does look like the type of information we produce as human beings, uh, there is other examples of information in nature, the argument goes, that, that doesn't come from a mind. You're mm -hmm. talking about sedimentary layers and that we can look at those layers and extract information uh, uh, about the Earth's history. Well, my, my response to that is that, that there actually is information there, but that, that is coming not from uh, natural processes or, or is not coming from a non-mind, but is coming from a mind because it's the laws of nature that are essentially causing uh, geological systems to behave in a predictable way. Mm -hmm. And when we understand those laws in nature, we can then 
take that insight and from the features of geological systems in this case, uh, gain understanding or extract information. But that, that information is ultimately emanating from the laws of nature, which are instructions. And, and that's okay. a type of information as well. So you have what uh, information theorists call algorithmic information that is really the laws of nature. And so you're not really getting around the fact that there's information in those systems, but the information isn't just coming from the system itself. There's something outside the system that's imposing that information on the system. So, so in some sense, this is putting that question back on, you know, rather it's not the layers themselves. It's like there's a an algorithm that drives this that we can extract information. But I, yeah. I so, yeah. so that's an interesting, so now the question is, do the laws of physics, right. are they a mind or from a mind? That, that kind right. of pushes right. the question back there. But I also get that you're saying something different about the bio, bio, biochemical molecules because you're arguing it's not just algorithmic, that there's something else, right. some other kind of information in there. Yeah, well, I mean, there's different types of information that people barter in. And in biochemical systems, the information is called semantic information. And what that means is that it's information formed from a sequence of symbols, and those symbols, certain symbol combinations have meaning. Uh, and so when we look at biochemical systems, there again, these are, this is semantic information. It's a sequence of symbols, just like a sequence of letters will produce words, a sequence mm -hmm. of amino acids will produce biochemical words in the form of protein structures. So if you extract that out into the language, I mean, in some sense, markings on a paper really don't mean anything, but as humans, we have said, okay, these markings mean X, Y, and Z, so I can put inform or I can right. put those markings down to put information in there. Someone else can come along and read them, right. but it's clear that there's a different kind of information just than some algorithmic information right. there. Right, right, and, and, and the point that you're getting at is that we know from experience that whenever we encounter information, there is a mind that is behind it. Uh, and that, that mind is necessary to construct not only the information, but the coding framework mm -hmm. that gives meaning to, to the symbols that, we, that are being produced. So it's not just simply the presence of symbols or symbols in a sequence, but it's symbols in a sequence where there's meaning. And that meaning has to be imposed by an intelligent agent. Or if there's algorithms to think about information in terms of algorithms, those two come from minds. That's our experience. So when we see the laws of nature, which are algorithms, it's not unreasonable to think that that's coming from a mind as well, because that's what our experience teaches us. Well, thanks, Fuzz. Those mm -hmm. are very powerful points. You know, when we look at creation, we do see lots of evidence for information. We see it in the, the way the laws of physics operate, but more importantly, we see it in the way the biochemical machinery operates inside the cell. You know, I would encourage you to go to reasons.org and check out Fuzz's article, Does Information Come From a Mind? And you will get uh, better equipped to understand why this is actually information we're seeing in those systems, but also just why wherever we see information, we, we are seeing evidence of a mind. And if we're seeing that in creation, that really does point to a mind who created everything and actually allows us to know him through the way he's revealed himself in creation.